Aerospace Defense Command was a major command of the United States Air Forces, responsible for continental air defense. It was activated in 1968 and disbanded in 1980. Its predecessor, Air Defense Command, was established in 1946, briefly inactivated in 1950, reactivated in 1951, and then redesignated aerospace rather than air in 1968. Its mission was to provide air defense of the continental United States CONUS. It directly controlled all active measures, and was tasked to coordinate all passive means of air defense. Topic air defense During World War II Continental United States Air Defense Forces during World War II were initially under the command of the four air districts, Northeast Air District, Northwest Air District, Southeast Air District, and Southwest Air District. The air districts were established on 16 January 1941 before the Pearl Harbor attack. The four air districts also handled USAAF combat training with the Army Ground Forces and organization and training of bomber, fighter and other units and crews for assignments overseas. The air districts were redesignated on 26 March 1941 as the 1st Air Force, 2nd Air Force, 3rd Air Force, and 4th Air Force, 1st and 4th Air Forces, through their interceptor commands, managed the civilian aircraft warning service on the west and east coasts. The USAAF's Aircraft Warning Corps provided air defense warning with information centers that networked in areas Army radar stations, which communicated radar tracks by telephone. The AWC information centers also integrated visual reports processed by Ground Observer Core filter centers. AWC information centers notified Air Defense Command posts of the four Continental Air Forces for deploying interceptor aircraft which used command guidance for ground-controlled interception. The USAAF inactivated the aircraft warning network in April 1944. Topic Continental Air Forces Continental Air Forces CAF was activated on 12 December 1944 with the four Air Forces as components to consolidate the CONUS Air Defense Mission under one command. AAF Regulation 20-1 later specified the post-war CAF mission, for aircraft warning. In 1945 CAF had recommended research and development be undertaken on radar and allied equipment for an air defense system for the future threat, e.g., a radar with range of 1,000 miles, to detect at an altitude of 200 miles, and at a speed of 1,000 miles per hour, but the HQAAF responded that until the kind of defense needed to counter future attacks could be determined, AC and W planning would have to be restricted to the use of available radar sets. CAF's January 1946 Radar Defense Report for Continental United States recommended military characteristics for a post-war air defense system, based upon such advanced equipment, and the HQAAF plans reminded the command that radar defense planning had to be based on the available equipment. Planning to reorganize for a separate USAF had begun by the fall 1945 Simpson Board to plan the reorganization of the Army and the Air Force. The Continental Air Forces reorganization began in 1945, when ground radar and interceptor plans were prepared for the transfer at CAF HQ in expectation that it would become Air Defense Command. CAF military installations that became ADC bases included Mitchell Field, the 21st of March 1946, Hamilton Army Airfield, the 21st of March 1946, Myrtle Beach Army Airfield, the 27th of March 1946, Shaw Field, the 1st of April 1946, McCord Field, the 1st of August 1946, Grandview Army Airfield, the 1st of January 1952, Seymour Johnson Field, the 1st of April 1956, and Tyndall Field, the 1st of of July 1957. Topic Air Defense Command 1946 Air Defense Command was activated on 21 March 1946 with the former CAF 4th Air Force, the TBEADS 10th Air Force, and the TBEADS 14th Air Force 2nd Air Force was reactivated and added on 6 June. In December 1946, development of radar equipment for detecting and countering missiles of the German A-4 type was planned part of Signal Corps Project 414A contracted to Bell Laboratories in 1945. The distant early warning line was first conceived and rejected. In 1946, a 1947 proposal for 411 radar stations and 18 control centers costing $600 million was the Project Supremacy Plan for a post war radar fence that was rejected by Air Defense Command since no provision was made in it for the Alaska to Greenland net with flanks guarded by aircraft and picket ships required for three to six hours of warning time, and Congress failed to act on legislation required to support the proposed system. In the spring, 
spring and summer of 1947, three ADCAC and W plans had gone unfunded. By 1948, there were only five AC and W stations, including the Twin Lights station in NJ that opened in June and Montic NY Air Warning Station Number no. Three, July 5, CF. SAC radar stations, e.g., at Dallas and Denver bomb plots, ADC became a subordinate operational command of Continental Air Command on 1 December 1948 and on 27 June 1950, United States Air Defense Systems began 24-hour operations two days after the start of the Korean War. By the time ADC was inactivated on 1 July 1950, ADC had deployed the Lashup radar network with existing radars at 43 sites. In addition, 36 Air National Guard fighter units were called to active duty for the mission. Topic: Reformation 1951. ADC was reinstated as a major command on the 1st of January 1951 at Mitchell Air Force Base, New York. The headquarters was moved to Ent Air Force Base in Colorado Springs on 8 January 1951. It received 21 former CONAC active duty fighter squadrons, 37 additional Air National Guard fighter squadrons if called to active duty. ADC was also assigned the 25th, 26th, 27th and 28th Air Divisions Defense ADC completed the Priority Permanent System Network for Aircraft Warning and Control, Ground Controlled Interception in 1952. Gaps were filled by additional Federal Aviation Administration FAA radar stations and the Ground Observation Corps disbanded 1959. In May 1954, ADC moved their 1951 command center from a former hallway, latrine area of the NTAFB headquarters building into a much improved 15,000 square foot concrete block building with main battle control center. During the mid-1950s, planners devised the idea of extending the wall of powerful land-based radar seaward with airborne early warning and control units. This was done by equipping two wings of Lockheed RC-121 Warning Star aircraft, the 551st Airborne Early Warning and Control Wing, based at Otis Air Force Base, Massachusetts, and the 552nd AEWCW, based at McClellan Air Force Base, California, one wing stationed on each coast. The RC-121s, EC-121s and Texas Towers, it was believed, would contribute to extending contiguous East Coast radar coverage some 300 to 500 miles seaward. In terms of the air threat of the 1950s, this meant a gain of at least 30 extra minutes warning time of an oncoming bomber attack. ADC's Operation Tailwind on 11-12 July tested its augmentation plan that required air training command interceptors participate in an air defense emergency. A total of seven ATC bases actively participated in the exercise, deploying aircraft and aircrews and supporting the ADC radar net. As the USAF prepared to deploy the Tactical Air Command E-3 Sentry in the later 1970s, active duty units were phased out EC-121 operations by the end of 1975. All remaining EC-121s were transferred to the Air Force Reserve, which formed the 79th AEWCS at Homestead Air Force Base, Florida in early 1976. The active duty force continued to provide personnel to operate the EC-121s on a 24-hour basis, assigning Detachment 1, 20th Air Defense Squadron to Homestead AFB as associate active duty crews to fly the reserve-owned aircraft. Besides monitoring Cuban waters, these last warning stars also operated from Nas Keflavik, Iceland. Final EC-121 operations ended in September 1978. <laughs> Air and Aerospace Defense Command The United States Army Air Forces Activated Air Defense Command in 1946, with a numbered air force of the former Continental Air Forces, from which it took its mission of air warning and air defense. In September 1947, it became part of the newly established United States Air Force. The command became a subordinate organization of Continental Air Command on 1 December 1948. CONAC gradually assumed direct charge of ADC air defense components, and ADC inactivated on 1 July 1950. But five months later, on 10 November 1950, Generals Vandenberg and Twining notified General Whitehead that 
The Air Force had approved activation of a separate Air Defense Command from CONAC with headquarters on Ent. With the mission to stop a handful of conventionally armed piston-engine-powered bombers on a one-way mission. The command was formally reactivated on 1 January 1951. With advances in Soviet bombers, ADC completed improved radar networks and manned interceptors in the 1950s. At the end of the decade it computerized air defense direction centers to allow air defense controllers to more quickly review integrated military air defense warning data and dispatch defenses e.g., surface-to-air missiles in 1959. ADC began missile warning and space surveillance missions in 1960 and 1961, and established a temporary missile warning network for the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. In 1968 it was redesignated Aerospace Defense Command In 1975, ADCOM became a specified command and the United States Executive Agent in the North American Air Defense Command. The single CINCNORAD, CINCAD commanded both. ADCOM's last surface to air missiles were taken off alert in 1972, and the Federal Aviation Administration took over many of ADCOM's SAGE radar stations. <laughs> Tactical Air Command and ADTAC On 1 October 1979 ADCOM interceptors, bases and remaining air warning radar stations transferred to Tactical Air Command TAC, with these atmospheric units assigned to air defense, Tactical Air Command ADTAC. ADCOM's missile warning and space surveillance installations transferred in 1979 to the Strategic Air Command's Directorate of Space and Missile Warning Systems SAC, SX, and the North American Aerospace Defense Command's Air Force Element, NORAD, ADCOM AFENA, which was redesignated the Aerospace Defense Center. The command was inactivated on 31 March 1980. With the disestablishment of TAC and SAC in 1992, the Aerospace Defense Center, the ADCOM specified command organizations, along with SAC's missile warning and space surveillance installations, became part of Air Force Space Command AFSPC. Air Force Space Command activated its headquarters in the same Chidlaw building where ADCOM had been inactivated. Topic. Chronology of major events Interceptor aircraft ADC had four day-type fighter squadrons in 1946. The ADC Interceptor Force grew to 93, 93 active Air Force Fighter Interceptor Squadrons, 76, 76 Air National Guard Fighter Interceptor Squadrons, several U.S. Navy Fighter Squadrons, USAF and USN Airborne Early Warning Squadrons, Radar Squadrons, Training Squadrons, and numerous support units that have played important roles in our nation's defense. The first ADC Interceptor, the P-61 Black Widow, did not have the capabilities to engage the Soviet Tu-4 bomber. Its successor, the F-82 twin Mustang, was even more disappointing. It took a long time to get into production and did not perform well in inclement weather. The early jet fighters, such as the F-80 Shooting Star and F-84 Thunderjet, lacked all weather capability and were deemed useless for air defense purposes. Much hope was placed on two jet-powered interceptors, the XP-87 Black Hawk and the XP-89 Scorpion. Designations changed to XF-87 and XF-89. They, in turn, also proved to be inadequate. The XF-87 was cancelled and the Scorpion underwent extensive redesign. The first-generation jets gave way to all-weather dedicated interceptor jets. The F-94 Starfire was pressed into service as an interim. Interceptor, and North American in 1949 pushed an interceptor version of the Sabre, the F 86D. Despite the demands its complexity made upon a single pilot, the F 86D was backed by senior Air Force officials. Some 2,504 would be built and it would in time be the most numerous interceptor in the Air Defense Command fleet, with more than 1,000 in service by the end of 1955 the F-860 was not ideal, however, its afterburner consumed a great deal of fuel in getting it to altitude, and the pilot was overburdened by cockpit tasks. 
The F-89D was modified to accept AIM-4 Falcon guided missiles F-89H and Air-2 Genie atomic warhead rockets F-89J as armament. The F-86D was modified F-86L to include an FDDL Sage data link that permitted automatic ground control. The F-86L and F-89H became available in 1956, and the F-89J in 1957. The first of the Century Series supersonic interceptors was the F-102A Delta Dagger in 1956, followed by the F-104A Starfighter in 1958. The F-101B Voodoo and F-106 Delta Dart were first received by ADC during the first half of 1959. By 1960, the ADC interceptor force was composed of the F-101, F-104, F-106, and the F-102. The North American F-108 Rapier was the first proposed successor to the F-106. It was to be capable of Mach 3 performance and was intended to serve as a long-range interceptor that could destroy attacking Soviet bombers over the poles before they could get near U.S. territory. It was also to serve as the escort fighter for the XB-70 Valkyrie Mach 3 strategic bomber, also to be built by North American. The Air Force expected that the first F-108A would be ready for service by early 1963. An order for no less than 480 F-108s was anticipated. However, by mid-1959, the Air Force was already beginning to experience some doubts about the high cost of the Rapier program. The primary strategic threat from the Soviet Union was now perceived to be its battery of intercontinental ballistic missiles instead of its force of long-range bombers. Against intercontinental ballistic missiles, the F-108A interceptor would be completely useless. In addition, the Air Force was increasingly of the opinion that unmanned intercontinental ballistic missiles could accomplish the mission of the B-70 Valkyrie, F-108 Rapier combination much more effectively and at far lower cost. Consequently, the F-108A project was cancelled in its entirety on 23 September 1959, before any prototypes could be built. In 1968, ADCOM began the phase-out of the F-101 and F-102 interceptors from active duty units, with both types mostly being transferred to the Air National Guard. The F-101 would remain in a limited role on active duty until 1982, serving in such roles as towed target carrier aircraft and simulated enemy radar contacts for airborne weapons controller students training for duties aboard the E-3 Century AWACS. The F-102 would see service until the mid-1980s as the PQM-102 aerial target drone. The F-106 Delta Dart, considered by many the finest all-weather interceptor ever built, was the primary air defense interceptor aircraft for the U.S. Air Force during the 1970s and early 1980s. It was also the last dedicated interceptor in U.S. Air Force service to date. It was gradually retired during the 1980s, though the QF-106 drone conversions of the aircraft were used until 1998 as aerial targets under the FSAT program. Topic. Interceptor gunnery training B-57E Canberra dedicated Air Defense Command target towing aircraft were used for training of F-86D Sabre, F-94C Starfire, and F-89D Scorpion interceptors firing 2.75-inch MK-4, MK-40 folding fin aerial rockets. Due to the nature of air-to-air -air weapon training requiring a large amount of air space, only a few locations were available for practice ranges. ADC assigned these aircraft to bases close to these large, restricted areas, and fighter interceptor squadrons deployed to these bases for this type of hot fire training which took place in these ranges. The gunnery schools were located at Yuma AFB, Arizona 17th TTS, and later moved to McDill AFB, Florida where the training continued over the Gulf of Mexico. With the move to Florida, the 3D TTS was formed at George AFB, California which performed training over the Mojave Desert in Southern California. Additional units were located at Biggs AFB, near El Paso, Texas 1st TTS and the 4756th TTS was located at Tyndall AFB, Florida to support the Fighter Weapons Center located there. ADC also supported overseas training at Johnson AB, Japan 6th TTS. 
from Johnson AB, B-57S deployed to Clark AB, Philippines, Anderson AFB, Guam, Naha AB, Okinawa and Itazuke AB, Misawa AB and Yokota AB, all in Japan for training of the interceptor squadrons assigned to those bases. The 6th TTS was inactivated by late 1957 and the Canberra trainers were designated a flight of the 8th Bombardment Squadron at Johnson AB. In Europe, USAFE supported a squadron of B-57E gunnery trainers at Wheelis AB, Libya where European-based interceptors deployed for live firing. Over the vast desert range there, to provide challenges for interceptors, the B-57S towed Styroforum, bomb-shaped radar reflectant targets. These could be towed at higher altitudes than the high drag 45 feet banners but hits could still be scored on them. By 1960, the rocket-firing interceptors were giving way to F-102 Delta Dagger interceptors firing heat-seeking AIM-4 Falcon air-to-air -air missiles. This made the target towing mission of the B-57E obsolete, and the B-57S were adapted to electronic countermeasures and Faker target aircraft EB-57E see below, in order to cover combat losses in the Vietnam War caused by two major ground explosions, 12 B-57S were reconfigured as combat-capable B-57Bs at the Martin factory in late 1965 and were deployed to Southeast Asia for combat bombardment operations. Six other B-57S were converted to RB-57E Patricia Lin tactical reconnaissance aircraft in 1966 during the Vietnam War, operating from Tan Son NHUT Air Base until 1971. Interceptor missiles IMs. The Bamak missile program delivered the first CIM-10 Bamak supersonic surface-to-air missile to ADC during September 1959 at Fort Dix's BOMARC Base No. 1 near the Missile Launch Control Center on Maguire AFB groundbreaking for Maguire's Air Defense Direction Center to house the IBM and FSQ-7 Combat Direction Central for Bamak ground-controlled interception had been in 1957. To ensure probability of kill before bombers could drop their weapons, the AN FSQ-7 used the automatic Target and Battery Evaluation to determine which bombers, formations to assign to which manned interceptor base e.g., using nuclear air-to-air -air missiles, which to assign to Bamarks e.g., with W-40 nuclear warheads and if available, which to assign to the region's Nike Army Air Defense Command Post that also had ATABE software for efficiently coordinating fire from multiple Hercules missile batteries. Bamark missiles bases were along the east and west coasts of North America and the central areas of the continent e.g., Suffolk County Missile Annex was on Long Island, New York. The supersonic Bamak missiles were the first long range anti aircraft missiles in the world, and the longer range BOMARC B models required less time after erected until they could be launched. <laughs> <laughs> Defense systems evaluation Faker or simulated target aircraft flew mock penetrations into air defense sectors to exercise GDI stations, air defense direction centers, and interceptor squadrons. Initially using modified B-25 Mitchell and B-29 Superfortress bombers, the aircraft would fly attack profile missions at unexpected, random times and attempt to evade coverage by flying at low altitudes and randomly flying in different directions to confuse interceptors. The aircraft were modified to carry electronic countermeasures ECM gear to attempt to confuse radar operators. In 1957, the propeller-driven aircraft were phased out and replaced by Martin B-57 medium bombers which were being phased out of tactical air command. Initially RB-57 as from reconnaissance units were modified to have their former camera bays refitted to carry out the latest ECM systems to confuse the defenders. Wing racks, originally designed for bombs, now carried chaff dispensers and the navigator position was replaced with an electronic warfare officer EWO. The modified B-57s were designated as EB-57 E for special electronic installation. Considerable realism would be generated into these simulated aggressor attack missions being flown by the B-57 crews. Often several EB-57s were used to form separate tracks and provide a coordinated jamming attack to complicate the testing. When inside the range of the GCI radar, and in anticipation of interception, chaff was dispensed to confuse the defense force and electronic pulses to jam radar signals were turned on. It was up to the defending interceptors and GCI stations to sort out the correct interception. Units operating these specially equipped aircraft were designated Defense Systems Evaluation Squadrons DSES. 
The 4,713th Defense Systems Evaluation Squadron was stationed for training in the Northeast. The 4,713th also deployed frequently to USAFE in West Germany for training of NATO forces. The other was the 4,677th Defense Systems Evaluation Squadron, which concentrated on fighter interceptor squadron training for units in the western United States. In 1974, the 4,713th DSES was inactivated and its EB-57s were divided between two Air National Guard units and the 4,677th DSES was redesignated as the 17th Defense Systems Evaluation Squadron. This unit was inactivated in July 1979 and was the last to fly B-57s in the active duty USAF. It shared the Defense Systems Evaluation Mission with the Kansas and Vermont Air National Guard. Defense Systems Evaluation operations were also carried out by the 6091st Reconnaissance Squadron, Yokota AB, Japan, later the 556th Reconnaissance Squadron and moved to Kadena AB, Okinawa. EB-57s were also deployed to Alaskan Air Command, Elmendorf AFB, Alaska, frequently, the 134th Defense Systems Evaluation Squadron, Vermont Air National Guard, retired its last EB-57 in 1983, and the operational use of the B-57 Canberra ended. 2. From adjacent sectors DCs and to 10 Nike Missile Master AADCPs. 2. Topic Continental Defense From 1 September 1954 until 1975, ADC was a component of the Unified Continental Air Defense Command CONAD, along with the Army's ARAACOM 1957 ARADCOM, and until 1965, the Navy's NAVFORCONAD. The USAF as the executive CONAD agent initially used ADCs, General Benjamin Chidlaw as CINCONAD, Headquarters Staff and ADC HQ Building for the Unified Command Staff, and New Block House for the Unified Command Centeradka Permanent System Radar Stations were used for CONAD target data, along with Navy picket ships Atlantic and Pacific Barrier until 1965 and Army Project Nike target acquisition radars. A CONAD reorganization that started in 1956 created a separate multi-service CONAD headquarters staff with Air Force Element, separated command of ADC from CINCONAD, and in 1957 added Alaskan Air Command and Northeast Air Command components to ADC. Former NEAC installations in a smaller Canadian Northeast area were transferred under control of Royal Canadian Air Force ADC, e.g., the Hall Beach Dew Line Station constructed 1955 to 1957. CF. Canada's Hopedale stations of the 1954 Pine Tree Line and 1957 Mid-Canada Line, 64th Air Division personnel were assigned to main stations of the 1957 Dew Line and annually inspected auxiliary, intermediate Dew stations maintained by the Dew m and contractor the White Alice Communications System linked ADC aircraft with Dew Line radars. On 1 March 1957 CONAD reduced the number of ADC interceptor squadrons on alert for the Air Defense Identification Zone. At the end of 1957, ADC operated 182 radar stations. 032 had been added during the last half of the year as low altitude, unmanned gap filler radars. The total consisted of 47 gap filler stations, 75 permanent system radars, 39 semimobile radars, 19 pine tree stations, 01 Lashup era radar, and a single Texas tower. ADC subsequently became a CONAD component of NORAD, for which the international agreement was signed on 12 May 1958 RCAF officers agreed NORADs primary purpose would be, early warning and defense for SAC's retaliatory forces, SAGE the semi-automatic ground environment SAGE for radar operators was installed at ADC's general surveillance stations by deploying CDTS electronics. Implementation of the SAGE Geographic Reorganization Plan of 25 July 1958 activated new ADC military installations, e.g., GATR stations for vectoring manned interceptors as well as BOMARC missile launch complexes with nearby GAT facilities. On 20 December 1958 NORAD approved the USAF ADC plan which included 10 Super Combat Centers SCCs in underground bunkers to replace five above-ground combat centers remaining to be built. 
modification of FAA radars to the ARSR-1A configuration Amplitron, antenna gearbox modification, etc. were to be complete by November 1960 e.g., at the Fort Heath radar station and all three Texas towers were in service by April 1959 with ADC detachments, radars on offshore platforms near the New England coast, and the Continental Air Defense Integration North schedule for gap filler radars included those for P-20F, London, Ontario, C-4C, Brampton, Ontario, C-5 5C, Mount Carlton, New Brunswick, and C-60, Les Etroites. Quebec, in the spring of 1959, ADC requested the Air Defense Systems Integration Division to study accelerating the scheduled 1962 deployment of those four sites. After the planned SCCs were cancelled in 1960, the SAGE system was augmented by the pre-SAGE semi-automatic intercept system for backup interceptor control as at North Bend AFS in February 1962 BUIC-2 first at North Truro AFS in 1966. By 30 June 1958, the Zone of the Interior Z facility for anti-ICBM processing that was planned for ADC to coordinate at end AFB the ABM missile fire was considered the heart of the entire planned ballistic missile defense system conceived to have Nike's use and wizard missiles on the 19th of October 1959 HQ USAF assigned ADC the planning responsibility for eventual operations of the missile defense alarm system to detect ICBM launches with infrared sensors on space vehicles Topic missile warning and space surveillance ADC's BMEWS central computer and display facility was built as an austere network center instead of for coordinating anti-ICBM fire which, at midnight on 30 September I-960, achieved initial operational capability IOC. On 1 July 1961 for space surveillance, ADC took over the Laredo test site and the Trinidad Air Station from Rome Air Development Center. The first aero cadre at the Hanscom AFB NSSCC moved 496 L system operations in July 1961 to ENTS Center in the annex of Building P4. Operational BMEWS control of the Thule site JRCA and FPS 50 radar sets transferred from RCA to ADC on January 5, 1962. The 12MWS activated in 1967. By the 30th of June 1962, integration of ADC's BMEWS CC and DF and the SPADATS center was completed at end AFB, and the Air Forces Iceland transferred from Military Air Transport Service to ADC on the 1st of July 1962. The 9th ADD established the temporary 1962 Cuban Missile Early Warning System for the missile crisis. Responsibility for a USAFSS squadrons and FPS-17 radar station in Turkey for missile test monitoring transferred to ADC on 1 July 1963, the same date the sites and FPS-79 achieved IOC. By January 1963, ADC's Detachment 3 of the 9th Aerospace Defense Division 9th ADD was providing space surveillance data from the Moorestown BMEWS station to a space track analysis center at Colorado Springs. On 31 December 1965, forward scatter over the Horizon Network data from the 440L Data Reduction Center was being received by ADC for missile warning, and a NORAD plan for 1 April 1966 was for ADC to reorganize its remaining 26th, 28th, 29th, and 73d air divisions into four air forces, the 1966-20th, Surveillance Squadron began ADC's phased array operations with the Eglin AFB Site C6 Project Space Track Radar the Eglin Phased Array's IOC was in 1969, and the North Dakota CMEWS began passing Parks Phased Array data to NORAD in 1977 after being modified for the ADCOM mission, after claiming in March 1958 that the Army's Zeus did not have the growth potential to handle possible enemy evasion decoy and countermeasure tactics. The USAF similarly identified by early 1959 that its planned Wizard missile was not cost effective against ICBM warheads. The Army's use deployed successes against ICBMs, Safeguard System, 1975-6, and Space Vehicles, Johnston Atoll, 1962-75. After tests of the 1959 High Virgo at Explorer 5, 1959 Bold Orion Explorer 6, and 1963 Project 505 Nike's use anti-satellite tests the latter's nuclear burst destroyed a satellite, the Air Force Systems Command ASM-135 ASAT collided with a satellite in 1984. 
Topic: Consolidated C3. ADC's Consolidated Command Control and Communications Program FY1965 to 1972 was an outgrowth of a 196x ADC NORAD page study for replacing SAGE BUIC with a primary automated ground environment page the program with a joint DOD FAA National Airspace System NAS resulted with DOD FAA agreements for a common aircraft surveillance system with the FAA to automate its new National Airspace System NAS centers ADC estimated its portion would cost about $6 million, with annual operating, maintenance, and communication costs about $3.5 million. The first BUIC-3 was set to begin in April 1967 at Z-50, Saratoga Springs. As the space mission grew the command changed its name, effective 15 January 1968, to Aerospace Defense Command, or ADCOM. Under ADCOM, emphasis went to systems for ballistic missile detection and warning and space surveillance, and the atmospheric detection and warning system, which had been in an almost continuous state of expansion and improvement since the 1950s, went into decline. BOMARC, for example, was dropped from the weapons inventory, and the F-101 and F-102 passed from the regular Air Force inventory into the National Guard. To save funds and manpower, drastic reductions were made in the number of long-range radar stations, the number of interceptor squadrons, and in the organizational structure. By 1968 the DOD was making plans to phase down the current air defense system and transition to a new system which included an airborne warning and control system AWACS, over the horizon backscatter OTHB radar, and an improved F-106 interceptor aircraft. The changing emphasis in the threat away from the manned bomber and to the ballistic missile brought reorganization and reduction in aerospace defense resources and personnel and almost continuous turmoil in the management structure. The headquarters of the Continental Air Defense Command CONAD and ADC were combined on 1 July 1973. Six months later in February 1973, ADC was reduced to 20 fighter squadrons and a complete phase-out of air defense missile batteries. Continental Air Command was disestablished on 1 July 1975 and Aerospace Defense Command became a specified command by direction of the JCS. Reductions and reorganizations continued into the last half of the 1970s, but while some consideration was given to closing down the major command headquarters altogether and redistributing field resources to other commands, such a move lacked support in the air staff. Inactivation In early 1977 strong congressional pressure to reduce management overhead and the personal conviction of the USAF Chief of Staff that substantial savings could be realized without a reduction in operational capability, moved the final reorganization of ADCOM to center stage. Two years of planning followed, but by late 1979 the Air Force was ready to carry it through. It was conducted in two phases. On the 1st of October 1979, ADCOM atmospheric defense resources, interceptors, warning radars, and associated bases and personnel were transferred to Tactical Air Command. They were placed under Air Defense Tactical Air Command (ADTAC), compatible to a numbered air force under TAC. With this move, many Air National Guard units that had an air defense mission also came under the control of TAC. ADTAC was headquartered at Ent Air Force Base, Colorado, with North American Aerospace Defense Command. In essence, Tactical Air Command became the old Continental Air Command. On the same date, electronic assets went to the Air Force Communications Service (AFCS). On the 1st of December 1979, missile warning and space surveillance assets were transferred to Strategic Air Command. On the same date the Aerospace Defense Center, a direct reporting unit, was established from the remnants of ADCOM headquarters. ADCOM, as a specified command, continued as the United States component of NORAD, but the major air command was inactivated on 31 March 1980. The unit designation of the MAJCOM reverted to the control of the Department of the Air Force. Commanders Lieutenant Gen George Straitmeyer, Marge Gen Gordon Saville, Lieutenant Gen Ennis Whitehead, 
Jen Benjamin Chidlaw Marge Jen Frederick Smith Jr. from the 31st of May 1955 Jen L. Partridge acting Lieutenant Jen Joseph H. Atkinson became ADC commander on the 22nd of September Lieutenant Jen Robert Lee Lieutenant Jen Herbert Thatcher Lieutenant Jen Arthur Agan Topic Lineage Established as Air Defense Command on the 21st of March 1946, activated as a major command on the 27th of March 1946, became a subordinate operational command of Continental Air Command on the 1st of December 1948, discontinued on the 1st of July 1950, re-established as a major command and organized on the 1st of January 1951, became a specified command in 1975. Redesignated Aerospace Defense Command on the 15th of January 1968. Major Command inactivated on the 31st of March 1980. Topic: Components. Topic: Air Defense Forces. Central Air Defense Force CADF activated on the 1st of March 1951 at Kansas City, Missouri. Moved to Grandview AFB the 10th of March 1954. Station redesignated Richards Gebauer AFB the 27th of April 1952. Inactivated the 1st of January 1960 Eastern Air Defense Force EADF activated by Continental Air Command on the 1st of September 1949 at Mitchell AFB, New York. Moved to Stewart AFB and assigned to Air Defense Command on the 1st of January 1951. Inactivated, the 1st of January 1960 Western Air Defense Force (WADF) activated by Continental Air Command on the 1st of September 1949 at Hamilton AFB, California. Reassigned to Air Defense Command, the 1st of January 1951. Inactivated, the 1st of July 1960. Topic: Air Forces. Note: Assigned to Olmsted AFB, Pennsylvania, but never equipped or manned. Not to be confused with 11th Air Force, which was assigned to Alaskan Air Command. Topic: Regions. Topic. Air divisions. Topic Air Defense Sectors. Topic Other Air Force Element NORAD ADCOM AFENA activated TBD. Redesignated a direct reporting unit of USAF as Aerospace Defense Center, the 1st of December 1979 Air Defense Weapons Center organized at Tyndall AFB, Florida, the 31st of October 1967. Assigned to Air Defense Command. Transferred to Tactical Air Command, the 1st of October 1979 Aerospace Defense Command Combat Operations Center (COC), designated and activated as NORAD Combat Operations Center, the 21st of April 1976. Assigned to Cheyenne Mountain Complex City, Colorado. Assigned to Aerospace Defense Command, the 21st of April 1976. Redesignated ADCOM Conic, the 30th of June 1976. Transferred to Tactical Air Command, the 1st of October 1979. Topic. See also. United States Air Force Portal.